Should've never doubted me. I'ma work to my last breath. I'ma hustle to my last breath. Yeah, yeah. When I was personal training, I got bored of just lifting weights because that's all I ever knew from books and magazines was bodybuilding, and that was very boring. So I saw mixed martial arts on TV, and I said, "Man, I fight a lot. <laughs> I always get in fights, but I don't know how to fight. I want to learn these moves." So I began to train mixed martial arts. Before I started firefighting, I was doing jujitsu for probably like two years. The people that were professional fighters, they would start putting me against them because I was raw, like I didn't have a lot of skill, but I had a lot of athleticism. So I would give them a hard time without actually beating them, you know? And then I was like, man, if I could fight these guys and they're pros, maybe I could do it too. I had had like, no lie. Like, 40 or to 50 street fights, right? In the street, growing up, bullshit, you know? And I didn't know what I was doing. It was just like, ah, you know, and just like anger personified. So then I was like, let me channel that into something positive. So I started doing that, and then the fire department came up. So it was like, it was personal training and MMA, and Jiu Jitsu. And then the fire department came in, you know? And then I was like, okay, I can't juggle all these things. He became a firefighter and he also became a professional MMA fighter. So <laughs> it was just too many things. My dad was kind of supportive. My mom didn't like it because she didn't like seeing me fight and get beat up and stuff. So they would go, but they didn't really like it. I remember when he was training the one time. It would kill me because he would go into the tub and, you know, sweat. And they'd come out and then um, Caesar would, you know, wrap him up and he would sweat like, crazy you know after and he had to lose like 20 pounds he would be like say his weight was 190 and then he had to go down to 170 to get into the fight so it was really hard to watch him you know prepare for these fights September 25th, The Hard Rock Live. MMA will change forever. The real ultimate fighter will emerge as that one. But all five of America's best teams send their top fighters to MMA War. UFC Pets, Steve Hollywood Hero, Mike Gringo Diablo Bernhard, Danny Bad Boy Babcock, Tom the Killer Galicia, America's bravest John Kelly, and Nico the Hero Perella. Also the debut of Miami and YouTube sensation Level. Level. Ticket dog sale at Ticketmaster and The Hard Rock Live box office. And somehow Perella's got to dig down. He's got to oh, find yeah. a second wind. Yeah, it's going to be important to see what the corner told him uh, in between those two rounds. Per and one thing is for sure, Perella really needs to establish himself. He's got to stop. He's got to stop the juggernaut that is John Kelly. Every single time he got a hit, I was like, ugh, ugh. you know, it, I could feel him getting hit. It was like it was somebody was hitting me. That's how it was. My last fight was like a knockdown, drag out brawl. So I felt good about that. I didn't care that I lost. I just felt good that I left on my own terms. That I didn't fucking give up like a little pussy in the championship fight, you know, and give the guy the easy victory. So at that point, I was like content with how everything went. It just was too much. And when I got physically sick, I realized that I need to stop being the jack of all trades. I need to stop putting all this half-ass energy into 15 different things and focus on one thing at a time. And I haven't been fight training since then. I met John early 20, 2013 when uh, a friend of mine, Ali, was interested in opening up a CrossFit gym and he approached me and he said he had other business partners, one of them was John, that wanted to open up a gym. So we all came together, we brainstormed, I met John Kelly, uh, he was a very energetic guy when I first met him and we all decided to take that leap of faith together and invest in a, in a CrossFit gym. We opened this place up, we started with zero and now we got like 200 members. And it's doing good. I mean, it's not like we're getting rich, but I am fulfilled now. We're all on the same level, the same frequency. We're all trying to get better. We all are passionate about exercise. And it's just fucking cool, you know? 
It's just so much better than any, it's not a job to me. It's like, I love this shit. I will be here for free, basically. All right, here we go. I always feel safe around John, first of all. I always joke with him when I go to, up to him and I whisper in his ear and I'm like, I feel so safe around you. In a joking way, but there's a lot of truth to that. Because when he's in the room with me, I always feel like everything's under control. There could be a flood full of members coming in and beginners. But I feel like he really, he knows so much that he can tell you, okay, this person should be doing that. You teach him how to do this. And I feel like he, he's a great leader. What I love about going to the gym is that I can be on the treadmill, you know, and I can, I watch him. And I see him at his best and what he does best. And it makes me very proud. You know, it really does to watch him. He's a very good teacher. He's got a lot of patience. And, you know, he's very funny. You know, so it, it's it's very nice to see, um, you know, to see him. So now I get up in the morning, I come here, I hang out with you guys who are my friends, then I work out with my friends, then I go home and I read comics and shit, and I take naps, and I play fantasy fucking basketball, and I pick up my kids from school, and I come back to the gym, hang out with my friends again, and then I go home and eat dinner, and if I don't want to come in that day, I don't have to, but I want to be here, you know, I enjoy being here. I'm not trading my time for money anymore. I'm trading my time for, for happiness, to spend time with you guys, to work out hard, you know, to do what I like to do and spend time with my family if I want to. And it's worked out. I mean, I just feel like this is not the end, of course. This is just another chapter in the story because I always get like a five-year itch. After about five or six years, I'm like, all right, it's time to move on and do something new. Will begin. That's when he held that sudden light inside his head.